Beginnings, endings, endings, beginnings, falling apart and coming together, but in the space between the endings and the beginnings, the crumbling and the building, the dying and the growing, the old and the new. There is a rift, a little crack in the firmament and another in the foundation. Who knows what sneaks in from other worlds at that point, in that liminal space, in that transitory time. Why, oh why, do we spirits love that rift so dearly? Why does it attract us like moths to flame? Perhaps because in this non-time and unspace, we are all together, regardless of the futile costumes we wear every day that separate death from life. We find ourselves glimpsing something true together. Fear. Fear is true. And when we get past it, It's the last all hallow tide, the last one we'll share together. There is a little more time before final goodbyes. Goodbyes are always difficult, aren't they? And this Halloween, there is a woman in an apartment being very distracted barely aware that the final All Hallow Tide is coming. Barely aware of the spirits trying to break through to her world. Barely aware of the spirits trying to break through her own heart. Wake up, little writer. Wake up. Time to <gasps> huh. Ah, I dozed off there for a moment with my computer on my lap, reclined on the couch, cat licking his paws beside me, familiar faces mumbling words I've already heard quietly on the television screen. A beautiful autumn afternoon blowing in through the breeze coming through the screen door to the balcony. Most of my plants inside for the fall now, happily hydrated and fed and kept company. I dozed off a little, trying to write the last All Hallowtide episode. Procrastinating. Procrastinating, as I call it. There are people on my mind. People who've broken my heart. People who've helped put it together again. Or maybe I did both to them. Ah, most of us have done both, haven't they? Isn't that indeed how you know someone was a significant visitor in your life, after all? 
The soy candle on my altar burns the smell of mulled cider through my place. And I did buy a little pumpkin to sit with my plants. So there are some clues that it's almost Halloween. How will we spend Halloween together this year, my friends? As she wanders around her little home, aimlessly visiting the little stations of the cross of a newly yet perpetually solitary woman's life, the plants in the southeast corner, the bookshelves, the candle on the altar, the cat on his tree, the water pitcher in the fridge, the clothes in the washer and dryer. Our little writer finds herself at a loss for what to say in the way of a farewell to these all hallow tides. They have long ago become merely aimless musings on the nature of death, rebirth, soul and body, cemeteries and graves and ghosts and humanity. Candles and pumpkins. Little left to say, she whispers. I feel like I've said everything I can. But that's not true, and she knows it. It's more about what she wants, what she needs. Who said that? Your narrator. I'm your narrator. Yes. But who is your narrator? <sighs> wow. What a question. What does my narrator want? What does my narrator do? Your narrator wants you to be happy. Your narrator loves you. I'm not sure I believe that. How can I trust you? Do you have a choice? She wondered about the implications of the existence of such a narrator in her own life. Could she be able to relinquish control enough to allow another to tell her tale? Or was this all yet just another fabrication of her mind? Wait, it's all hallowtide. The last all hallowtide, she thought out loud, putting on her coat and boots. No, wait, why? She normally didn't like to go out, and Halloween is a complicated holiday for her these days. But on this night, by some force she didn't quite understand. She felt herself getting ready to go outside anyway, perhaps even against her will, as though some unseen force was pushing her out of solitude. Where? Why, to a cemetery, of course, her narrator answered. And though she was tired and sad and lonely and scared, her feet moved one at a time out her door and into the elevator, down to the ground floor, outside her building, and she walked, 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 walked. Journeying on, journeying away from the crumbling away of an old life, journeying through heartbreak, and love, and desire, and joy, and sorrow, and all kinds of wondrous things humans have the amazing opportunity to experience. Despite their repeated self-flagellation for going through all of it. What is this cut on my hand? She asked herself, but then realized she had cut it on a sharp crack of the hand of a marble statue she had been holding. She winced at the pain, but it served as a lovely reminder that someone had put it there to begin with. And even that 
was an act of love. Her back ached a little, deep in her shoulder blades. What's that? she asked, and realized there had been wings there once, but she'd ripped them out in order to be human. All in another life, of course, she whispered to her narrator. It's all just from a fictional little life, she said. But it was a bit more like a question. Like a question she expected her narrator to affirm for her. Yet the narrator simply wouldn't. For it is not a narrator's job to assure or soothe the characters in their story. It is merely their job to steer them through beginning, middle, and end. And on Halloween, all ends lead to other beginnings. The cemetery lay just ahead of her. In past the gate she went. The headstones were beautiful. There were many lit candles, yet no visitors, not mortal ones anyway. But to her mortal eyes, she could see no ghosts either. I'm still afraid, though, she answered me. I did not answer back. She began to hear music. You came to find me in my little world. I know I'm that song, for that she whispered. And I, can say. I wrote that song. And while you're Indeed, here, yes. Don't fight my it was a song she knew it's well. How you got here after all today. Dance with me. Who? Special one. Me. Or I have the chance, I think, to make it so. My narrator. Come wake me up. Yes. For I fear I'm dead. And all this time I only had to Are know. you him? Or are you her? Yes. Give me a name. You never gave any of them names. That this is not the way my story Yet I am all of them. These stories have a secret that I'll share, my friend. Krakens in the deep. The shadow picked me up and dragged me down. Demon bellhops. The shadow has the pen that wrote me. Wolves turned men, lions turned women, monsters in the mountains, and in that shadow, devils escaping hell, angels fleeing heaven, ancient gods and spirits of mischief. Who would you like to dance with? I am all of them in one. Nothing can stay But I want. In the dark, yes. In the cold, I want. In this dark, cold yes. I want. Life. Yes. No, you don't understand. Of I just Halloween. want. Hmm. Will no form appease you? I want to speak any form but my will do words run dry as I long as it loves me but for what my heart as long as it does not bear. leave me alone I need to just then every 
a swirling vortex of shadow and light and flesh and spirit manifested. And she felt him there. And me. And her. Envelop her fully. Ghost of all ghosts. It's you, my friend. It's you. That you'll be flesh and blood. You're not alone. I can't stand ghosts or spirits. You're not alone. You're not alone. This cannot be the way the story ends. The story is for lovers. This I swear, my friend. The shadow picked me up and dragged me down The shadow has the heart that broke me down And in that shadow I'll give you everything Nothing left behind in that darkness just hold me closer Don't ever let me go I can't stay unembraced much more In the dark, in the cold On this dark, cold night Of This is not the way the story The story is no secret, it's told again and again. The shadow picks us up and drags us down. The shadow has the pen that wrote us this down. is not the way the story ends. The story is no secret, it's told again and again. The shadow picks us up and drags us down The shadow has the pen that wrote us haunted so joyfully, be possessed so romantically, be cursed so passionately, my friend, my beloved, my sweet one, and all listening to you, no fear. Just journeying and love. That's all that's left to say on this, the final All Hallow Tide. Hello, my friends, and thanks so much for joining me for episode 289 of On a Dark Cold Night. This is Kristen Zaza, host, writer, narrator, composer, podcaster, etc., 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 etc. I hope you're doing well. Honestly, honestly, I'm going through a separation and our anniversary is on Halloween, so this was a tough one. I wasn't feeling very spooky, pumpkin-y, Halloween-y, but I needed a little narrator friend of my own, so I hope you understand. I'm just going to be open about it, because as we approach the last ten episodes of the podcast, as you can tell, 
I may need to go slowly. I might need to be flexible and gentle. I need to practice on myself what I preach to you, which is be kind to yourself. Be human. Be it with me, if you like. But it's what I need to be, too. I may not be the most Halloween-y version of myself this year, for this, the final All Hallowtide. Whatever on earth that means. But it is perhaps the most significant All Hallowtide for me yet. I hope it brought something for you, too, in some capacity. I'd like to thank everyone who supports the show on a monthly basis on Patreon, including my newest monthly supporter, Dustin. Thank you so much for being here for what I do and create, Dustin. If you'd like to support in the same way, every member who pledges $1 or more a month U.S. gets access to my complete and downloadable soundtrack of over 270 tracks, while every supporter of $5 or more a month U.S. gets that a monthly tarot reading video uploaded every full moon, a monthly bonus episode every new moon where I have a long conversation delving into topics and themes that patrons can discuss in our community chat. And you can also access a backlog of 70 bonus mini meditation episodes as well. To learn more, visit patreon.com slash darkcoldnight. You can support one time only without any perks at ko-fi.com slash darkcoldnight or by buying a t-shirt or hoodie at bonfire.com slash on-a-dark-cold-night or by buying my book on Amazon on a dark cold night, Tales of Loneliness, Creation, and Love. It's available in Kindle ebook and paperback format. It's a collection of 35 stories from the show and a new prologue, epilogue, and preface. All this info is at kristenzaza.com. You can listen to my album's favorite little songs from On a Dark Cold Night, Volumes 1 and 2, on Spotify, Apple, or wherever else you like to stream music. If you're enjoying the show, please leave a rating and a review wherever you like. Follow me on social media, Instagram at Dark Cold Night Podcast. Facebook and YouTube under On a Dark Cold Night, TikTok and Blue Sky at Kristen Zaza, Twitter at A Dark Cold Night. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grateful for you. All the time. Happy Halloween, my friends. Sweet dreams. This podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. Sonar.